That's the one, look at the bottom. You see where it's got the sucker coming out of the rootstock? cherry and we got a living pear. Those figs don't look alive. A lot of times these figs will die on the top when we have a cold winter. They'll come up from the rootstock and the rootstock is pure and this is alive. So we do have a living fig but it needs to be moved. It needs to be planted. There should be three figs. Yep, this one's got some. Well, no, that's not fig. Right here, there's a little bit of stem and a little leaf opening on that fig. Pawpaw. Pawpaw. Oh, we do have pawpaw. Pawpaw's right there in front of you. Two more steps. There is pawpaw fruit. We do have some. It's got soft, feathery leaves poking out. I think there was only one of these alive, though. We had three originally, but I think the two died in your first year. Nothing there. Oh. That's a living papa. So we have two living four year old papas? Well, no, they were two years old when we planted them three years ago. But that's as big as they've gotten in three years of planting. There's no nutrition in this soil. They need to be moved to our vegetable garden area by the pond where they can thrive. Those three blueberries are alive, but barely. They're just tiny little sticks. Pomegranate has come back from the roots. And it looks like my peach is gone. There may be some life in some of these main branches, but I don't see anything that looks alive. Yep. So basically we've got a cherry, a pear, a pomegranate, three blueberries, two pawpaws and at least two figs, maybe a third, if it comes up from the rootstock that we need to move. You guys see the difference of what a tractor can do, having the right tool for the right job. This did not get mowed um, last year. I don't even know, did it get mowed the year before that? I think so, but look at this, these are trees. Yeah, these are trees. This is a tree, this is a tree. They um, need to be cut or they will take over this whole area. So yeah, now we're able to maintain it because you look what I've cut just to get over here and you can tell a big difference. that absconded and uh, mainly due to the wax moth and um, starvation basically. The dearth that came in the fall that we had a drought for that summer and fall was enough to make them leave and so we found some dead starving but most of them were gone. They had absconded the hives because they weren't sufficient due to um, some bad advice I got from a beekeeper. So I am now listening to the bee lady apiary and following her advice. And I will be feeding the, my next two hives. We have a friend who has asked us to buy two new nukes and get our hives back up so that she can have honey. 
Yeah, there's some logs I need to get out of there. And a couple stumps I need to avoid. It's nice going for a walk, huh? Yeah. We have all this beautiful property. It's going to be nice to be able to enjoy it now. I think those are always the late ones. This seems like this this would be a great great garden over here. Over like in front of the shed and take all this area and, and hit it with a disc harrow and plant some corn. Or like, you don't have to get close to the edges because those will be roots, but right in the middle section. And then we can take the stall um, bedding and put it right onto the ground. A lot of these weeds have not been pulled out. They are winter annuals. These winter annuals, as soon as the temperatures come up a little bit, are gonna disappear into the soil and feed the soil back again. So I'm not too worried about them. They're also small sized weeds. We've got the bulk of their size is gone so that they won't compete too much with our new little baby cabbage. I'm placing our cabbage close together as we normally do close spacing in our garden beds due to the high levels of nutrition that we've added to our soil. This helps us grow a smaller, I mean a bigger crop in a smaller space. Yeah. Would you look at this? We got a lot done. The only thing that I didn't get planted was the tray of kale. 
and the tray of alyssum, which are the flowers that I'm going to plant pretty much anywhere in the garden, so it didn't matter if I didn't plant them right away. But we've got the green cabbage all planted all the way down this whole row almost till about here and those are the table setting lettuces i don't know how well they're going to do because they're really really um heavily seeded in the pots and the pots are the type that you just plant in the ground and like when i was trying to plant them in the ground i couldn't really figure out like what depth I should do it at. So I just did it where I thought it should be and Ryan said he thought it needed a little extra soil. So I took some of the decomposed compost and put that in between them, which would should help them grow really well. It's really rich in nutrients. And then the red lettuce I finished out the row with. I decided to keep this tiny little plot of kale just because we, we've been eating it for dinner like every other night. So I kind of want to keep it for now until the other kale gets bigger. Then these rows have been prepped for the kale, but we didn't get that far. We've got the rest of the red lettuce here. And then the red cabbage planted the rest of the way down to the end. So we got a lot planted, a lot in the ground. And now the sun is setting and I'm tired and exhausted and achy. And I'm gonna go in now and fix dinner for my family. Picked some kale for dinner. I pulled up the rutabagas and turnips that were left in the garden and I'll chop them up and it'll be a lovely dinner from the garden. So that'll be nice. Another hard but productive day on the farm. We're glad to have as much done as we did. Always could do more, but there's only so many hours in the day and the hours are up for this day for this mama. She's gonna go in, cook some dinner and just relax for the rest of the night. <laughs> and kick back and put my feet up in the recliner and just, <sighs> and then tomorrow we'll be back at it again. Um, I've got some carrot seed and some beet seed that I want to make sure we get in the ground, but I'm not sure. I think Ryan's going to have to discarrow first because we're kind of running out of garden space, believe it or not. So if I have him discarrow that area back there where the manure pile is, then um, I could just go ahead and seed. I think that would probably be the easiest right now. We have a lot on our plates and getting it all done is kind of hard, so we're taking a lot of shortcuts. We might not be doing things exactly how, as I, ha, exactly how I know they should be done, but we're getting them done. And that's more important to me at this moment in time in my life. So with that, I'm going to call it a day. Oh, no she didn't. <laughs> the bottom of my box fell out. <laughs> Oops. Okay. <laughs> now I'm headed back to the house. So thank you guys for watching. You know the drill. We'll see you next time on Wholesome Roots.